It's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And Mark, we have made it. 150 podcasts. Can you believe it? Like yeah. it's 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 hard to believe it. We took some time. I took, well, I took some time off to, to do a I. little vacation. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I was doing the doc and I realized this is this is one bit, this is 150. Uh very exciting from you know, from the Punisher season one to now here we are with Loki. Yeah. Yeah. Big changes happened during throughout that time. All these, well, it's over three years now going on four. <laughs> wow. Wow. It is. It, it's it been a wonderful ride. I, I'm so thankful to you and, and all that you do for this show. And, and, uh, I'm I'm trying to get a little better. I will I will tell that to the listeners. Uh, but uh, Mark is is a hero. He's a champion. He uh, uh, I just basically turn the mic on and start talking, and, <laughs> and Mark does everything else. So. Well, we've been doubling up on our episodes too. So for a long time, for a while, when I was doing Wandavision, you were doing Snowpiercer. Yeah, with, and, da- with Daphne, and yeah, that was fun. And you were, you did Invincible with Jamie. Yeah. And it was, like, so much that we added on to this podcast, like, doing multiple episodes. I think we're trying to compete with TV podcast industries <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but nobody could get to their numbers. They Oof. they are seasoned. They've been around for a long time. And they are definitely legends when yeah, it comes to yeah. podcasting, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. I love those guys. I, I just started listening to their coverage of Loki uh, before we started recording, so I haven't finished theirs theirs yet so don't want to spoil anything yeah but we also (laughs) recommend that you guys go listen to them as well i listen to their podcast it's pretty cool there there's some similarities in what we're gonna say i think oh i'm sure to what they are going to say or what they have said so check them out and then uh listen to us or vice versa you have you know you have your choice plus they have a, a pub quiz that you could actually follow so they do that with their own particular podcast which is always fun because they is. ask you a question. So we might actually tell you that question at the end, too, so you can participate if you're interested. I have been in the running the last few times, gotten almost every question right. I think there's only when, been one question that I got wrong from the card. Other than that, I've always been in the running, but I never have won yet. So <laughs> <laughs> It's always worth a try. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody's out there as game, so they could all put their two cents in. Exactly. Awesome. So, well, with that, this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the first episode of Marvel's Loki. So, we're covering Loki Season 1, Episode 1, Glorious Purpose. And a synopsis for this particular episode is, well, the show synopsis for Marvel for Loki is, in Marvel Studios' Loki, the mercurial villain Loki, Tom Hiddleston, resumes his role as the god of mischief in a new series that takes place after the events of Avengers Endgame. So it's pretty much very simple for what Marvel threw up when it came up about the actual overall series synopsis. But the particular episode synopsis is, after stealing the Tesseract in Avengers Endgame, Loki lands before the Time Variance Authority. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, these are characters that uh, that are new to me. I've heard about them. They've only shown up a few times. So if you're not familiar with the Time Variance Authority, after this episode comes up, I will be putting in a uh, episode, a link to a YouTube for Comics Explained that explains to you about the Time Variance Authority and the particular character Mobius. So when when you guys have time... You could listen to us, and then you could go to that YouTube channel and check that out. So with that, we're going to move right along and go right into our initial thoughts. And Steve, what were your thoughts? 
Oh, I loved it. I, I really did. For, from all the humor, the mystery, the, the sci-fi, everything. Uh, and what I loved, too, though, was it gave us a story. It, it gave us this information about the, the timekeeper gods kind of guys. But really, they're not the focus of the story, of the plot. So we have a whole other plot to worry about. We don't even need to get into those guys nope. uh, if the show doesn't want to. So I, I really, really did. I was really, I was impressed. They gave us just enough information to fill in the blanks to tell us, okay, what the TVA is all about, what they do, why they're there. And now we have our main plot. I really liked it. Yeah, I have to agree. And I love it. it honestly, it was a great introduction to the show. And I loved how they take right off after the scene in Endgame once Loki escapes with the Tesseract. So it's, it's, and it's the first time in TV podcast industries are, have made that mention where, you know, they haven't really done that with any other Marvel property. Like, mm -hmm. let's say with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they didn't really take off. We did get to see Nick Fury and Agents, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We did not really get the whole link over or segue to that particular show. But with this one, they did. So you know that this is a true MCU show that they're gonna take off right after and go into tv and then have it mix in with the movies that are coming out because this basically sets us up for like dr strange and the multiverse of madness because this is dealing with times and like time in general and variants or variant different pieces because everything gets skewed mm -hmm. so i really enjoyed learning about the tva which you know, like I said, I looked into a bit since it was int introduced within the comics in like the late 80s, I believe. Okay. It only sporadically showed up every once in a while in the 90s or even in the early 2000s, but they never made such a big thing about it. You know, the Fantastic Four was involved within the comics when it came to the TVA. Mobius was involved with them. And you got to see a lot of it uh, at that time, too, with the description of it there. They were always in the comic books, they were like, they would show the TVA and mm -hmm. it would be a bunch of desks in the sky and like row after row after row. And the difference between this and the TVA in the show, what I liked is uh, that instead of uh, multiple versions of Mobius, you have different characters. You have different agents of the mm. TVA. It wasn't just one person that they used over and over and over again. Oh, okay. I see you say the comic, and that's how it is in the comic books. Correct. Yeah. Right. So there's okay. a good, there's a good difference in it. And I think this sets up and makes it look better too, because it's a whole world unto itself. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have that enforcer, uh, B-15 and she's been in the comics as well, but at least with this, you see, it's like a, it's not just one person that's cloned over and over again, or a different version of him that's taking charge within time. And with this they they have like pretty much like almost like the umbrella academy if you think yeah. about it yeah very much it, i got those vibes definitely from the umbrella umbrella academy kind of like that that yeah. time authority that we mm -hmm. had there too right yeah because five was involved with them at that time now we're going back and we're thinking about another show but <laughs> <laughs> that we're looking forward to as well too because yeah. we're gonna get season three eventually eventually yeah well, with that, well, since we've I've already been dropping a lot of bombs with a lot of stuff, we mm -hmm. should move right into our top five or highlights of this particular episode. Sure. Why don't you start? Fugitive variants been killing our Minutemen. And you need the God of Mischief to help you stop them. That's right. Why me? The variant we're hunting is... You. Well, my number five, that would be, I love the intro of the episode once Loki got to the TVA. His introduction w with the cartoon of <laughs> the things that are going on and introduction to the TVA and what it was. Uh, it, it was the sign of on all that he has said in life. Like he had a sign off on what he had said in life with that one character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would you sign this? <laughs> Why do I have to sign this? Well, sign this too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Plus, uh, the way he was taken out of his Ag Asgardian leather, as he said, because he loved it. He goes, this is true Asgardian leather. <laughs> and they just, like, 
strip him away with it with <laughs> like a ray gun or something. But yeah. within that, you know, you get to, a lot of women will probably enjoy. You get to see Tom Hiddleston naked, but he <laughs> falls through some sort of portal, and then yet he's in his prison garb from the TVA. Yeah. So I thought that was really entertaining, especially with the one that the uh, the one guard that kept time looping him, and that was B fifteen. Mm-hmm. And she kept time looping him back every time he tried to run away, and yeah. he was confused. Uh, the one thing that I loved too is that he was confused that he was a robot going through the detector. <laughs> that for was hilarious. Spiritual aura. He was yeah. doubting himself. What is with that? Of all things, I know you're the uh, the god of mischief, but geez, you gotta, you gotta. I was like, am I a robot? Am I? <laughs> oh, oh, a, oh, I'm afraid to go through it. <laughs> and then he yeah. finally goes through it. It's okay. <laughs> What's yeah. that? And he gets like a little <laughs> image, like uh, a Polaroid of like his spiritual aura. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, and that's my number five. Also, is just that opening sequence that that twelve minutes of of just just sheer fun and humor, and uh, but also introducing us to the mystery of what. Uh, you know what we're going to be seeing uh throughout this season um i was i was just i was totally sucked in i loved it um in fact it, it wasn't until the title card came up i didn't realize that we hadn't seen the title yet and i was like oh wow and i paused it to see oh wow it's been 12 minutes you know uh that we did this whole sequence but uh, but yeah everything that went on in that uh that processing line that he was in uh to the to the guard with the ticket and the guy he didn't give me a ticket and then he zapped um, <laughs> you know uh I, I could probably go i could go on and on about just that opening yeah Be- it was it was great because there were bits of it that we saw in the trailer, like we saw the guy sign off. This is everything you've ever said. So we knew some of what was going to take. Cause I'm really glad they didn't have all the the funny bits, like you said, with the the robot uh, wanting to put him in his prison garb, and he's like, "This is the his guardian leather." So uh, yeah, it just was was really really great. And I've got some more in my next point that talk about uh, the time variance authority. But uh, that that opening was just really really just just spot on perfect. It was. Yeah, I enjoyed it too, and no wonder that the show is pretty much the highest rated Disney Plus show right now. Yeah. That's been watched, so that apparently they got a lot of viewers regarding this, because we had WandaVision when we covered WandaVision, when Ben and I, and then I had Damien, we had Ben, mm-hmm. uh, Ben as well as Greg. We had a great time doing that, and that was highly anticipated. People were like literally waiting overnight to watch this because in on the east coast you have to wait till 3 a.m <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to watch these things now this was dropped i believe on tuesday at midnight and you didn't get it until wednesday so as soon as i came home from work on wednesday i had to watch it yeah and you and i were talking about hey we're covering this i was like yeah i already got my notes in what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you you jumped on it quick I, I wasn't able to jump on it quite that quick but uh but yeah You've been away, so I understood. So <laughs> I was like, okay, but I really wanted to watch it. I have watched it like two or three times, mm-hmm. but I went with my initial thoughts with all my notes because they are spot on for what my thoughts are overall. I didn't really have to add or take away, but yeah, th- this this show has jumped out with full force, and they don't hold any punches when <laughs> they're uh, mm-hmm. they're giving a- us what we want. So that was your number five. So. Yep. My number four, well, I already mentioned it. This is the uh, the mix of equipment within the Time Variance Association or the Boy. TVA itself. Right. So, it, it, like I mentioned before, it reminded me of the Umbrella Academy when, when mm-hmm. Five gets stuck in that place to work there. And it's very similar to that. So it had that feel of the 30s and 40s, but with a mix of a new world to it as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I just really enjoyed that look be, because you got a mix of a new world. Because once you look out when Mobius shows him this this world, mm-hmm. when they're walking through, it looks like something out of Star Trek. And he's looking at it like a spaceport or something. And he goes, oh, that's an illusion. No, it's not. <laughs> and wow. But where he was before within the, you know, the jury and everything else for the court, it looks very much dated. Even yeah. the offices look dated. Same thing with Casey when he encounters mm-hmm. Casey at his office and a whole bunch of things that were involved with that. The TVs on there with the uh, the characters or the cartoons. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. And yeah. I just loved how they introduce everything with, with Tara Reid over, you know, narrating everything too. 
Yeah, Tara Strong. Tara Strong. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I said That's okay. I, I think TV Podcast Industries did the same thing. They said Tara Reed, and I was like, oh, the, the credits say Tara Strong. Uh, yeah, I, I looked her up. She's done a lot of voice acting. Yes, she has. Like, uh, in a lot of things. But my number four was basically the same thing. Uh, just everything that went on at the time variance authority there, from the, from the cartoon to those judges' chambers. It opened up so much that we're going to get once we do get to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of, of Madness, because I, I thought it was really interesting because it's one of those things that we've discussed it. But from, from my understanding of how it was explained, there is there currently is no multiverse. There's just the one timeline. And whenever somebody branches off to make a second timeline, that's where the TVA steps in and and resets it because remember he showed him that thing uh that they they were that he said oh it's it's getting to the point where it's going to hit the red line yes and i don't know what what that meant i don't know if that meant it was going to be it was going to be a permanent timeline if they didn't or they the have multi versions of a timeline yeah so it gets splintered and splits off very much like what the hulk was dealing with with doctor strange master mm -hmm. In Endgame, she mentions right. it, and Hulk was telling her then, if you remember back in Endgame, she goes, you can't do this, you're going to disturb, and you're going to branch off all these different timelines. Right. And then the way that Banner explains explains it to her in his oral fashion, we could put these back, and that's what Captain America did. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess Captain America, if you think about it, putting everything back is pretty much almost like a... Uh, a villain in some sense and the TVA should be going for him, but they kind of like hush that up real quick. It's like, Oh, we were expecting that. Well, yeah. And that's what, what she says. Cause and even this is my next point. So uh, uh, is this whole thing of, of Loki trying to convince them that the Avengers are the bad, bad guys. But what she says is exactly what you, she just said. Well, no, what the Avengers did was predestined. That was going to happen. Correct. They didn't actually, it, it, it's a weird thing when you start to get into predestination and, and that kind of stuff. I don't want to get religious at all, but it, it's really weird because the way she said it was, well, what you did was uh, what caused a variant. What they did was supposed to happen, Yeah, you know, and it, it's just weird, but uh, it is weird for the fact uh, that they were expecting it to happen. Right. They already knew. They yeah. they knew because they stand outside of the timeline. Yeah. And it's, they only step in and there's a whole cartoon. So if you guys really want, just go watch that guided cartoon for the yeah, TVA. Exactly. <laughs> and and they'll, they'll tell you all about the sacred timeline and the, the timekeepers and stuff. So, yeah. So that was my number four. Let's hear your number three. I think is kind of where we're at. Yeah. That would be Mobius's look at Loki over the years with his escapes. Mm -hmm. And his best moments. I just love that. The eyeball scene where Mobius points out that Loki is loving it. Like, he loves to torture people. And his interactions with the Avengers and taking that drink from Tony Stark after Tony mm -hmm. goes, yeah, you need your, yeah, <laughs> I need that. <laughs> after he got pummeled by the Hulk. And the escape with the plane, which was Loki being D.B. Cooper. Yeah. And that, I don't know if you want to talk about it. I have some information about D.B. Cooper because this is something that was uh, kind of spoiled to us with the coming attractions for Loki. And this was back in January, I believe. And it was highlighted and people were expecting it to be bigger than what it was. But I kind of figured out even back then, I'm like, wow, this is just something that they're going to show that was pretty funny that. Loki oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't catch that in the trailer. So, okay. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was a highlight within the trailer that I really, really enjoyed. So basically, uh, if a lot of people don't understand, D.B. Cooper was a real person. Mm -hmm. He hijacked a plane for money. And once he hijacked the plane, he had them set down the plane, get the money, got onto another plane, took that. Then he jumped off that plane with a parachute in the middle of the flight with all the money and he's mm -hmm. never been seen again yeah. and this was in 1971 i believe and it, it's it's something it's like a mystery to the world of what happened to this guy so obviously in this they use it as a way of saying oh okay it was loki all the time which right. i really love for the yeah. fact that he you know for what was it like a hundred thousand dollars or something did all this so basically, I, I thought, wow, that that is amazing how they could use this this story as yeah, this Loki. real life story, right? And it was a a bet apparently between Loki and Thor that he couldn't do something like this. Yeah. So this is obviously before the events of the Avengers, right? And before he tried to be evil Loki at that point. 
Yeah. But I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I yeah, I'm right there with you. The whole DB Cooper. I I've been fascinated. I was fascinated by DB Cooper uh for a few a while back and and kind of when I think when I was in the nineties or when I was a kid, I remember reading about it. And if you there's various there's been various uh, you know theories and things of who he was, and even some TV shows have have played with it. it you know, if you ever watched news radio, there was an episode of news radio where they kind of implied that Stephen Root's character that owned the radio station may have been D.B. Cooper, because he alludes to coming into a windfall of money in the early 70s and being able to start all of his businesses off or something like that. It's it's hilarious, though. But yeah. <laughs> so and then, of course, what was it? Was it Without a Paddle, the Seth Green movie where they went into the woods? And I think they had something that had something to do with D.B. Cooper also. And I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but my number three is, is kind of the same thing. It's, it's very close to that. Um, I, I need to go back and rewatch Endgame uh, to, to get exactly how Loki figured out that they were traveling through time or did he overhear them saying it? Because I didn't, I, I didn't, don't really remember. I mean, he was, I, I saw him being, obviously he was being arrested. And in the original, if you go back to the Avengers, right, that's the mm -hmm. events from the very first Avengers where they arrested him, take him back to Asgard. Yes. And, and put him in prison that all took place in in 2012 <laughs> yeah so yeah it's just it, it's just interesting the, the way they used that that scene and then like i said i guess he kind of figured out after in game that they were traveling through time and that's why he says that but it, it, you know it, it was funny we had another funny moment there where he kind of tries to use his powers in in the courtroom <laughs> there and he yeah. can't uh and they keep talking about resetting him but they never really tell us exactly what that means so i, I think it's gonna be interesting to see if we get some a clearer definition of what it means to be reset yeah i think the whole resetting thing has to do with the time itself how uh the timeline was fractured, but they were there at that time when it happened, and it was their way of correcting it, so they reset it so that it goes on to its natural path Yeah, of yeah, how I'm it's sure supposed it's, to be. Yeah, I'm sure it's something like that. It just it, it wasn't real clear to me. Like and they hide they, the bodies. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of like that. Well, And like they said that the other, the other Loki that they're hunting for has mm -hmm. been stealing the reset bombs. Correct. So why is he stealing a bunch of them? Why does he want... He wants you know, chaos. He's um, he's he's the god of mischief. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but he's just as evil and ruthless. So, and mm. to to let you listeners, if you guys are really confused after watching the episode, the Loki that we're dealing with now is the the Loki from the 2012 version of Avengers. So it's literally right after he got like thrown around like a rag doll by Hulk and then taken into custody of the Avengers. And then he, at the end of Endgame, he sneaks away with the Tesseract, even with the, you know, the mouth guard in it in himself. Mm -hmm. And he has his shackles on because at that point, Hulk runs down and says he didn't want to take the stairs. And uh, Ant-Man had literally pushed the uh, Tesseract in the suitcase. So literally his story takes off right after the original Avengers. So he's not the, the Loki we remember in Endgame that becomes like a hero or anti-hero or somebody who helps out or has grown and matured. He, he didn't have much character development. He was still leaning on that idea of, I want to be the master of the universe. Mm -hmm. Like the, like he actually has a conversation with Mobius regarding yeah. this too. Yeah, this is interesting because we're, I'm going to, talk some more when we get when we get down below to, to my my last point which is loki and i want to talk some more about him sure. and this portrayal because i think it's really really cool all right so that was your number three uh we're on to my number two and yes. that would be well hunter b15's determination to reset loki all the time mm -hmm. i just had fun with that but i think he does this with she does this with all the variants mm -hmm. you know she she has that you have to reset them at every given point all these variants, because uh, I guess she's like, you know, headstrong on getting everything corrected within mm -hmm. time. Apparently, like I stated before, the character was in the comics when the TV was in originally introduced as well. So that's another one. Apparently, it's character accurate based on her, her representation. So I'm really enjoying that fact. It makes me want to go back and look at that stuff. So yeah. like I said, uh, check out the YouTube link that we're going to put in on our Facebook group when it comes to comics explained when he mentions it it's only about maybe 14 minutes long 
but he has a lot of references to uh, particular issues and who the TVA encountered within it. So check that out. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, my number two is Agent Mobius himself, Owen Wilson, that I think was was great. I don't know how he's portrayed, how it's portrayed in the comics, but I love this character. I think he's it's really cool. I liked his way, just the way he exp- expressed his lines, um, the way he gives the exposition that he's that his character has to get. And he had a lot to talk. He had a lot of talking he was doing to explain that. I I love the whole. You know, for somebody who thinks he's a winner, you really lose a lot. You get beat up a lot. When he's talking to Loki and he shows Loki his past and then he sh- even shows Loki the what the future would have been if he hadn't escaped in 2012 and he shows him the death of Frigga, which I guess that's from the Dark World, Thor, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually enjoyed that, but for the fact that what a lot of fans consider to be the worst Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, yeah. Thor the Dark World, is highlighted in this particular show. Well, and they even highlighted it in the end game. Like it's been like it's almost like the MCU is trying to beat us over the head with Thor: The Dark World, <laughs> going, "No, it is a good movie. It is a good movie. We're gonna keep <laughs> we're gonna keep reminding you of it just to, until you admit that it's a good movie." I actually you know? did enjoy that so, movie. I don't know why, but a lot of people are out there hating on it. But I understand their hate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I just thought it was interesting and just his portrayal of this. And then when Loki and I'm going to talk some more about Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of Loki as well, because I think we're going to get a lot of that um, character development that we have in the movies. I think we're going to we're going to see that maybe in the show. But I don't know. That's that's just speculation. I, I love that he wanted to understand Loki. He says that again. I want to understand why you do the things you do. And we realize at the end with the reveal that the person he's hunting is another version of Loki that we realize, oh, that's why he wants to understand it. Because if he can understand this version, maybe that'll help him hunt the other version that's out there. Very true. And he was much, very much a fan of yeah, Loki that was great. too. I th- I really enjoyed that aspect of Mobius too. It, it kind of gave me that uh, Agent Coulson vibe, mm-hmm. vibe or like in uh, the original Avengers when Coulson was just like fanboying over Captain America, mm-hmm. and now it's like oh Mobius is that way too with with Loki and to some degree. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he's a good guide, and I wouldn't be surprised. It it, it kind of gives you that parallel to other shows. Uh, that have been out there, you know. The, there's a, a one series with uh, Robert Vaughn and another actor from the '60s, and I'm forgetting it. But it, it's kind of like you know, they're opposites of one another, and one's there for to do one thing, and one's to do another. And mm-hmm. I think that it's going to be pretty much like a duo within this particular series. Yeah. All right. So that was your number two. Yep. My number one, that would be Loki, you know, Loki just opens up to Mobius about everything and himself. Now, that's real character development over the Mm -hmm. course of one episode. And I have to agree with you on that. It's like, you know, we do get to see the start of that because, honestly, this is a character that we only knew that was looking to take over the world in Mm -hmm. Avengers. So this is the 2012 version of Loki. Mm -hmm. And all he wanted to do was literally take control but then through the means of the time tva they he gets to see other his other version of himself and he learns what he becomes and how he is and you see where he and he confesses who he is and why he does these things Mm -hmm. you know he he just basically tries to control others through their fears because he has what his own fear about himself and his illusion is based on his own fear, for the most part. Yeah. And then Mobius tells Loki who they are hunting, which you already spoke about, which is another version of him, which is pretty cool. But I kind of predicted that in some way when they kept talking about how they were going through time. And I'm like, why would they constantly be taking this guy through time? And who knows himself better than himself mm-hmm. in some way, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that that is why Mobius doesn't want him reset in in any way. So he has something pure to work with that right. it's like maybe he could get into his mind or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and that's Loki's my number one is just the whole thing, the the range we see from Tom Hiddleston 
you know, the very beginning when he's he's has this grand posturing, has this wonderful monologue about what he's going to do and and how he's going to be king of the world and all this, and and Agent, uh, you know, Mobius just kind of shows him, well, it's not really what was going to happen, and then. I was trying to figure out was as I was typing my notes up, I was trying to figure out how to express it is when he's watching that monitor, you know, he, after he escapes from Mobius's office and then he comes back to Mobius's office, he's watching that, the clip again of his mother being killed. He's watching the clip of him and Thor uh, fighting side by side. He's seeing Odin uh, saying that he's proud of him. He's seeing all the things that would have happened if he hadn't escaped. And then he even sees his own death. Yep. There and th- the range of emotion on Tom Hiddleston's face, and even to that point where he breaks out when he laughs at it, but it's just amazing. This that whole it's just a masterful performance, I think, by Tom Hiddleston, and and uh, it just I was I was a uh, I was awed by it. I'll put it that way. It, yeah. it had me in awe, you know, from the moment. Uh, again, just the way he expressed himself with his face, without not even saying a word as he's watching all that play out in front of him was just amazing to me. Yeah. The, his range is amazing within this particular episode alone. So I'm curious as to what we get within the next bunch of episodes that we do ahead Mm -hmm. for the season. And yeah, Tom Hiddleston, you know, it's one of those things if you, you know, basically it's just like concentrating on him and that particular character. And you just, you learn to uh, love his craft and what he does and how he's able to present himself. So yeah, it, it was definitely really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was your number one, right? That was my number one. Yeah. So, um, you've got quite a few notes. I don't have very many notes. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, just, I've already talked about some of mine, the whole take a ticket scene uh, part that, you know, it showed us that there is some menace to this TVA when that guy just gets zapped. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, we talked about D.B. Cooper, Casey. I, I loved the Casey character. I hope we get to see more of him. Yeah. That whole that whole what's a fish. I, I want to know what I'm complying, what I'm, you know, what threat I'm, uh, what, you know, what what I'm being threatened with before I comply or something like that. Just, <laughs> just everything was was great with Casey. I hope we get to see more of him and, uh, and just see where where he goes. Uh, and, you know, all those Infinity Stones in his drawer. And that was another one of those moments for Loki for Tom Hiddleston to play it, to realize that these stones don't even mean anything here in the TVA. Yeah. They're just, they're just trinkets. To the, they're, they're paperweights to these guys. They've seen so many of them throughout the course of their, you know, th- they're keeping the multiverse in check, so to speak, that they just throw them in drawers. They use them as paperweights. They, you know, they have no power here. Yeah, they have no power because when you're in the TVA itself, like very much like you were saying before at the in the court scene, he tries to mm-hmm. get out of there with his magic and magic and everything else has no power there. It shows you how powerful the TVA is mm-hmm. and they're more powerful even than <laughs> the, the, the stones themselves. You know, mm-hmm. the Infinity Stones mean nothing. So it shows you their power as it is, as being part of time itself, which is amazing. One of mine would be, well, we find out that Loki's last name is Lofison <laughs> or L- yeah, Lof- yeah, I, Lofason. I, I, I tried to catch it each time they said it and I never could get exactly how, how it was said or spelled. So we, yeah. we actually get a real last name for Loki. Yeah. And he is apparently variant L1130 to the TVA. So he has a designation like the movie or the TV show, The Prisoner. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I am not number one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I'll move on to, uh, you already spoke about, yeah, Casey. Yeah, he's one character that I really enjoyed within this. I want to see more of him. He's a really good character. <laughs> the fact mm-hmm. that he doesn't know what, what a fish is. <laughs> He's just been stuck at his desk the whole time. Uh, and one last thing that I'll talk about out of my notes, because you already covered a lot of my topics. I would say the kablooey candy the kid had in France in 1549, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. That was uh, that the other Loki had apparently given him and... In, in, uh... Uh, Mobius gives it to the guy and says, check it for whatever, some kind of trace elements or something. And the guy's like, well, there's not going to be anything there. And he's like, well, check it anyway. And then it was. It had like a big, big range because that's literally what came from that Loki. And uh, to continue on with that scene, too, we see, a, you know, they asked who it was to that 
that French kid, and he points to one of the stained glass windows within mm -hmm. the church itself. The first thing you think of right away, a lot of fans and TV podcast industries actually went into this and they speak about it. I ask uh, or encourage our listeners to go listen to them because they brought it up just the same. It looks like Mephisto, but we've already had this ruse of Mephisto being involved mm -hmm. within WandaVision. Yeah. I don't think they're looking to do that. Maybe in this particular time they did. It didn't remind me so much of Mephisto because I don't I've not read those comics. I'm not as well versed in the comics. What it, what that stained glass window reminded me of though was remember Loki's original helmet? Yep, exactly. That he would that's wear, where that I was going the, with it. Yeah. It had the big horns coming out. That's what it reminded me of. That's that's uh, the first thing I was mm -hmm. going through with my head too when I first saw that. And I'm like, well, if it was hooded and it had the horns, it has Loki's original helmet, and that's what mm -hmm. that's the first thing. But a lot of people like love to read into these things when it comes to yeah. these mcu shows now on disney plus and you know it, it to me it's it's pretty cool and the but yeah that's the first thing i thought of was loki and mm -hmm. that was loki with his horns but a lot of people are attributing it to mephisto and mephisto if you are list you listeners don't know in the comics he's pretty much like the devil of the marvel cinematic universe or Marvel Universe in the comics, and uh, the reason why they had to call him Mephisto because they couldn't back in the during the days of the comics code, you couldn't talk about the devil. Mm -hmm. So they created their own, which was somebody who was very similar, had that look, and now we have him. Particularly, we've been all <laughs> I've been anticipating him and wanting him in there, mm -hmm. and we I speculated this throughout all of Wandavision, and obviously it was all for gone because you know we couldn't do anything with it and it wasn't everything it was agatha all along right but you know i think they're pretty much setting us up with that same thought as well and then yeah. uh, uh to top on to that thought of like characters that we thought that might be involved nightmare because they talk about nightmare within the show itself you know, we, we don't like that particular, oh, hold on, I'll go right to my quote. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this is in your quote, so that that's the only, again, I'm not as well versed in the comics, so these characters mean nothing to me except for what I've heard people speculate about them, but I, I don't have any clue who they are or what they do or anything. Okay, yeah, because Mephisto, like I said, is literally just the, uh, mm -hmm. the Marvel's version of the devil. Right. Or, you know, or Satan or whatever you want to call him. But... They mention uh, in this in this quote states from Loki saying this place is a nightmare, and then Mobius just turns around and says, "That's another department. <laughs> now that department, I'll help you burn down." Yeah. So that I thought was pretty funny too, because it's that that was during their walk, and you get to see how ex you know expanded mm -hmm. that world is, the TVA is, because mm -hmm. uh, the science is off the charts when it comes to this, because you see flying cars and everything. But yeah, yeah no, Nightmare was a big part of Doctor Strange, too. Uh, originally, that was supposed to be for the Multiverse of Madness, but they changed it. Now it's just going to be the straight Multiverse of Madness. They're not putting Nightmare in there. Mm. And the reason why they're not doing that and why they had to do rewrites and we have Sam Raimi doing it is because in certain parts of the country, like in China, you're not allowed to talk about the devil or nightmares at that so hmm. they're, they're trying to skew it to a point where it works out so they're just concentrating on this multiverse which makes hmm. a lot of sense so eventually i think this is literally just about loki in general and mm -hmm. the evil version of loki and who overcomes that yeah but those are my thoughts and that was my quote <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, so what, one of my quotes was, uh, we already kind of mentioned it already when, when Loki's in there and the thing is trying to get him to take his clothes off. He says, this is fine as guardian leather. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course they just, they just disintegrated off him. <laughs> yeah. The next one and the only one I have left would be Loki saying, oh, believe me, you could smell the cologne of two Tony Starks. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's great. Yeah. My only other quote is, uh, is that one from Agent Mobius again, when he's talking to Loki and he says, oh, but you do love to lie, which you just did because you love to talk. Talky talk talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, there was so many good. Actually, there's a lot more quotes you could pull from there this was, particular episode so if you that, wanted to. Yeah. And it it's loaded full and if you haven't watched the episode and you're listening to us first go back watch it come back listen to us it's yeah. the best thing we can say, say to you but uh with that we'll move on to uh some news so 
A lot's been going on in, within the Marvel world, or even in comics adapted to movies and shows. So, well, we're all awaiting the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. And a lot of movie theaters in the United States, and they have it out in Europe and elsewhere in the in the world right now and they have to wait for uh for sony to give them that code to release it so we don't know when it's going to drop and i was assuming that it was going to be on tom holland's birthday which was like a like last tuesday in the beginning of june and it didn't happen i was so eagerly awaiting i thought it was going to happen and it didn't so we we look forward to that because uh literally we only have until december and everything all the months are going by so fast <laughs> so uh we're looking forward to uh spider-man no way no way home to come out and as we all know we got a ton of villains in this particular movie i think we're looking at the sinister six and we're gonna get uh let's let's name them we got electro which was Jamie Foxx, Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock, and he kind of spoiled that for us. The main focus of the group is going to be Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and they mentioned recently that we're going to get the Lizard from the first Amazing Spider-Man. They've already announced, of all things, which I'm looking forward to, I think it was Aaron Taylor Johnson as, oh, what's his name, who's hunting everybody? Oh, I'm forgetting his name, but he, he's a major character. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is what we do when we live podcast. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Craven the Hunter, that's what it is. Good job. Just popped in my head. <laughs> yep. But uh, Craven the Hunter is coming in, but uh, whether or not he's introduced in this particular movie, I don't know. Somebody had mentioned that the Rhino, which I'm not really looking forward to because I didn't really like the Amazing Spider-Man 2's Rhino, but... And then obviously we got Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man as well as uh, the other amazing Spider-Man himself. So Andrew mm. Garfield will be back involved. And apparently we get Kirsten Dunst and I think Emma, Emma Stone is coming back. But they, they don't really give you that much. But uh, the villains are definitely a guarantee. And we're going to get a lot within that. And I'm looking forward to that particular movie. As well as Black Widow coming out. Probably within, literally within a, about a month or so. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get that. And I will look forward to covering that when that comes out. That will be the first time I go into the movie theater. <laughs> I haven't nice. gone yet. Yeah, I haven't yet either. So I look forward to doing that. And we could cover that. And then have a good time covering that. Mm -hmm. Back to the movies. Here we go. <laughs> yep. So with that, that, that's pretty much the news that I have. We haven't really received any feedback, so we'll talk about how you could send your feedback if you're new to this at the very end. But right now, we're just going to move right on to podcast recommendations. Uh, the only one I've got this week, um, besides the ones we already mentioned, TV Podcast Industries, of course, but uh, we have to go back, Lost Revisited. That's the joint podcast between Podcastica and this network, the Next Level Podcast Network. Ben and Kristen are going to continue are continuing their journey through season five of Lost. So if you love that show and love to hear their voices and love to hear my voice, I send them a voicemail every week. I try to anyway. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that they're back on a regular schedule again, just like we are. Yeah, same here. And to talk about more that's on the Next Level Network, well, Ben has finally released Wilhelm. So I actually had recorded, so you got to wait until my episode comes out. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about John Cusack movies, nice. so it's always fun. So uh, Wilhelm just, it's like oh, an overall, very similar to what I do with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, but in this case, he, he discusses particular things like actors or particular style of movies, or if not particular genres of film uh, as well, and or series or trilogies. Uh, he's got like, I, I think his list goes on for three years now. <laughs> so, but you could hear me on there as well. A lot of our friends are on there too, so check us check out the Wilhelm podcast on the Next Level Network. So check that out there. Uh, I also highly recommend Watched It in the Eighties with Damien and his various guests. So with him, he just basically covers all the movies that are popular within the eighties that we all love. So I highly recommend that. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more of him. He's he can be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network as well, and you could well you could listen to the walking dead cast which kind of inspired me to do this along with steve and a whole bunch of other people that we are friends with 
to get into podcasting. So you could watch The Walking Dead or listen to The Walking Dead cast on Podcast Network. And that's with Jason and Lucy. I had the privilege of being a guest on the most recent episode with Jason, and we talked about, of all things, Fear of the Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 15. Um, not the one I really wanted to be on, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I try to love Fear more and more. I enjoy what they have. Ugh. I love the actors, but the writing is just getting very, very bad over the time over its course of existence so i'm just hoping that and you'll hear it in the particular podcast how i always really want the fear some of the fear characters to move on and move into yeah. the main show which is regular walking dead and that would be probably best for the show but the now is this week yep yeah, and apparently they uh have released stating that they're doing a season seven so i don't understand that yeah <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you can hear me on the Walking Dead cast, and I highly recommend the Walking Dead cast on the podcast to work with Jason and Lucy. They'll be definitely be back. They're, they finished, you know, they'll be finishing up Fear this weekend. Mm -hmm. But you could hear their coverage of the Walking Dead when the Walking Dead comes back and at the end of August. Yep. So check them out. So for YouTube recommendations, well, uh, the Grim Life Collective on YouTube, I usually recommend my friends. So Michael and Jessica, I have to congratulate them on 100,000 viewers and achieving that award. So they got that silver plaque, and it's awesome that they're doing that. And my, so Michael and Jessica are still going strong with their new coverage while living in L.A. So they've been covering a lot since they moved to L.A., and Michael's been doing this a little bit more than full time at this point. So he's been going to uh, like Sharon Tate's house. Uh, I think I mentioned it when Jamie and I recorded previously uh, where or the last time when he went to uh, a house that Kurt Cobain had had. Uh, there's a couple of hauntings there. He actually went to a house that was haunted that somebody who was a fellow YouTuber of his has that's haunted in California on the hills. And he went and experienced that himself with that while he was doing the whole Sharon Tate house. And I thought that was pretty cool. Next up would be uh, The Thing with Two Heads with Sean and Chris. So uh, somebody who I know, Sean Clark, has gone back to the conventions to represent celebrities as a manager for the cons. So it's somebody I've bumped into over the course of 20 plus years at conventions. And, you know, Sean knows my face. So he knows my voice and just knows me as that guy that bothers him. But uh, I love what they do. They have their own particular YouTube and it's a podcast as well, so you could listen to that. All you have to do is look up The Thing With Two Heads. Chris is an effects artist and is working on the, the new Halloween Kills movie and the Halloween Ends movie. So Chris has been kind of busy. You could actually see his cameo in Kill Bill 2 during the wedding. He's one of the guys there. I believe he played the groom. And, um, but they still put out content for everyone to see so i i highly recommend that check that out on youtube so that's the thing with two heads and you could also see or check out sean clark's horrors hallowed grounds for all new episodes and this is basically uh like scene footage or where they filmed or filming locations of particular movies and usually it's horror movies but you could check that out and sean knows his way around california and hollywood because he lives there and he has fun doing that stuff so check that out on YouTube. Very cool. Yeah. So as Mark mentioned earlier, uh, you can submit your feedback. We love to hear from our listeners. We can, uh, you can hear, obviously you can hear this podcast on whatever player you're listening to it on now. It's on YouTube as well. Any of your podcast player of choice, please, please look us up there, subscribe. You can give us a review. We'd love to get a review on there. You can also check out our website, which is panels to pixelspodcast.com. Our Facebook group, we make a post for feedback every week, uh, is yep. facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the T O spelled out right in the middle, and the number one at gmail.com i said before we have a youtube channel which is panels to pixels podcast go there subscribe give us a thumbs up and uh, you'll hear us every week as we come back next week we will continue on with our continue of the next episode of loki and i uh, can't wait to see where this story goes exactly and like steve was telling you you could tell your friend uh, word of mouth is the best way for us to get known so if you have a friend just explain to them we could be heard on, you know, Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. 
and they could check us out and listen to us as well. As far as YouTube, yeah, we are Panels to Pixels podcast. We got a message from somebody who was a fan thinking we were Josh from Panels to Pixels. <laughs> And that's the other <laughs> yeah. panels to Pixels. And they're located in England. And I really recommend people go check them out as well, too, on YouTube. That's all they do is YouTube. And they have, like, a nice insight on with their videos when it comes to all the games that come out from Marvel or the cartoons or even some of the uh, MCU stuff that comes out. They, they're very much into it. And uh, I'm sorry if uh, a listener got confused and messaged us thanking, thanking Josh, but... I kind of relay the information to them, but uh, yeah, they're two different ones. With they're just panels to pixels on YouTube, and we're panels to pixels podcast. So keep that in mind when you research us. <laughs> so with that, uh, where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. I've already mentioned this before, and there we cover action movies, adventure films, suspense films, thriller films. Right now, I'm in the process. I took a vacation there as well. So I was gone as well as when Steve took a break as well. So I, I needed that time for myself. And it was a good relief. Yeah. But now we're heading back into things. So I just released earlier today. Today is being June 12th. It's a Saturday. And uh, I released the Jason and the Argonauts episode with Jerry and myself where we cover that particular movie. So we had fun with that. This coming week, we'll be recording about Goonies, because it's, it's the 36th anniversary of Goonies. It would have been fun if I started that podcast a year ago. It would have been the 35th, mm -hmm. but I did it now. So a lot of people are talking about Goonies, too, recently, too. So I highly recommend you guys check out the movie. If you haven't watched it, I'm sure you have. It's an iconic film from Richard Donner and produced by Steven Spielberg and has all our favorite characters in it or actors. And Jamie and I will be covering that this week, as well as Baby Driver, with paik who you know from strange indeed as well as run for your lives so he and i are going to be covering baby driver this week as well and i believe the hunt for red october will be coming soon as well so i've been putting a lot of things in the works so that way we'll have more content to throw you guys so i won't be like weeks out <laughs> very cool very cool. And I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do and they play them. So uh, you can hear my voice there uh, for many of our friends' podcast, And of course, yeah. right here on Panels to Pixels. And eventually you'll probably hear them again on Adrenaline Cinema when we cover Predator or something. Yes. <laughs> I think that was the movie you picked. I can't remember. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, pretty much that's our show. And I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Good night.